Welcome to another board game review. Today I will be reviewing Condottier. This is another Silver Line Games produced by Fantasy Flight Games. It's uh, playable 2 to 6 players. It's recommended ages uh, 10 and up, but uh, depending on the maturity of the kids. And uh, playable in 30 to 45 minutes, but with more players the games tend to go longer, especially if you add uh, optional rules. Now, let's see what you get inside the box. First off, you get the rule book. Very small rule book, nothing special here, but it does a good job at explaining the rules, which aren't that complicated, by the way. You have one of the smallest game boards I've ever seen, like this. It depicts um, Italy, and of course, you have a bunch of cards some wooden blocks and some pots. Now, how does the game work? Well, every turn every player gets 10 cards in their hand plus one for every region they control. Regions are shown on the map. Now, with, your, with these cards you're going to be forming battle lines which will be um, competing against other players to, uh, for control of that area. The first player to ever have either uh, all their cubes on the board or four adjacent ones will be the winner. It is possible with optional rules to take uh, back conquered areas or take them over. Now let's take a look at the cards. The main cards are going to be mercenary cards. You can play these in front of you and you can make a battle line. Now these will range in value from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it skips to 10. So these are your mercenary cards and form the main part of the game. Now you have your concubines. Concubines are a special card. Especially note that these have a white number on them, these have a red number on them. This is going to be important later. The concubines lets you add one, but the player who has the most concubines gets to be the next first player, so he gets to choose which region is going to be fought over and he's going to be the first one to play cards. The next one is the heroist. The heroist has a combat value of 10, the same as the mercenary of 10 that I just showed you. The only difference is that it's a red one. Bear that in mind again. Now, we have the war drummer. The War Drummer is a special card in that it lets you double the value of your mercenary cards, the one with the white uh, numbers on them, not the red ones. So it could double the one with the 10 and make it a 20. It's a pretty powerful card. Not over powerful, but you'll see that later. We have some special cards. The Scarecrow. The Scarecrow uh, you can play to draw back a card into your hand because you're always going to be fighting two battles with the same uh, hand so you don't want to um, blow all your cards on a combat you already know you're going to lose and try to withdraw some or to stretch a little bit of time we have the favor of the Pope, power of the Pope uh, this essentially means that you get to play the marker of the Pope pawn and players cannot attack that region as long as it's on there and uh, you destroy the highest mercenary card so again not the red ones but the white ones also if the other players have uh, knights 10 but you also have a knight 10 they all get destroyed including yours this one <clears throat> is a, a surrender card which actually is a very interesting card in that it allows you that when you play it the player with the highest points at that moment of his complete battle line wins the game it could be you it could be somebody else so that's why you have to keep calculating season cards here you have a winter card a winter card makes all your mercenaries a value one so the 10 is going to be worth as much as the value one soldier but the red ones don't get affected by the winter card. 
So that's the main difference between the two. Now this one is uh, spring. You only have two seasons, uh, winter and spring. It cancels the winter card, or if you play the winter card, it cancels the spring card. Spring lets you add plus three to your highest mercenary. But remember, if you have a 10 and another player has a 10, you also get to add three. So that's always something uh, to keep in mind. Basically, that are all the cards in the game. Well, of course, there are a lot of duplicates, but that are the most important cards in the game. So, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be back, uh, going back and forth. So, the first player places his pawn on a region he wants to conquer, and battle begins. The first player plays card, second player, until somebody passes, and then uh, everybody else gets to keep playing until everybody has passed. And the battle is concluded, or you play one of the surrender cards. When you win, you get to place one of your cubes onto the board to show that you control the area. Remember that when the pawn of the Pope is on there, you cannot attack that area. Um, now, the way it works when you're going to try to conquer an area that's already taken by another player is that. Um, the defender, the defending player, gets to watch all the players play their cards and only has to play when he wants to, but when he starts playing and he passes, his turn ends as normal. So he has a big advantage in that he can see what cards you're going to be playing and he's going to let you waste a lot of cards. But the problem is, if somebody plays that surrender card before he has a chance to interact, he loses. So, there's a lot of interesting choices to be made in this game. Do I like the game? What do I think about the game? Um, yeah, production value-wise, it's not the baddest game I've ever seen. It's not the best game either. Artwork is beautiful. Uh, it's a very fun game, but it's only good when you play it with a lot of people. If you play it with two people, it's going to be too much luck driven by the card drawing. It tends to be a little bit better when you play with more players, but it does tend to drag longer, especially if you uh, take in the rule that you can take back over other countries. Um, so, that being said, I do really like the game. I do recommend it to a lot of people. But it's got to be your cup of tea, because if you don't like it, you're going to be stuck with a game that you're never going to end up playing. I like it a lot because when I travel, I can take it with me easily. That's why I like a lot of the Silver Line games, uh, portability. But uh, that being said, it's not a bad game. It's not a good one either. If I should rate it, I would probably rate it about 5 or 6 out of 10. So. I hope you enjoyed the review and uh, that it would make you uh, make it possible for you to decide if it's a game you would like to purchase or not. Bye.